I was going to talk about player data and save files uh, directly in the scene, in this scene, and I actually recorded a video for that. But I realized I want to do it in, in a new scene just so that you get to understand the concept a bit more before applying it here. Because right now, after I recorded the video, I realized it's, it gets a bit messy and sort of hard to explain. So, so let's do that. Let's create a new scene. So we got our camera and put lighting in it. And then I'm just going to add a cube. Right, and I'm going to create something really simple. So the idea is the game would be just if you click on the cube, then you get a point, and, uh, and that's it. That's, that's, that's the whole game. And uh, the reason why is because I just wanted to talk about keeping high scores in the system. Right, so let's set it up quickly. <clears throat> so we've got the cube. Playmaker and just do what we did in I believe in week two we talked about uh, <clears throat> how to create this so initially an idle state and then an add score state and the transition would be a mouse down event go to add score and uh, I want to define a variable, so this would just I'll just call this score, and I want it to be an integer. So here, all we need to do is we're just going to do an int add. We're going to add score, add one to this score variable, and after that, we're going to do a finish event. Right, so uh, let's just take a quick look. Right, so the, I'm clicking on this a few times, you can see that it's going back and forth between the two states. And now the score variable is nine. So I click on it nine times, 10 times, 15 times now. Okay, so that's good. And second thing I wanna do is I want to create a GUI text and I'm just going to position this up here and I'll, I'll send this int variable to to the GUI text object to update this text here and what I need here is a score string variable because the GUI text takes a text variable. A text, this is a text field, so we, we need a, a string variable to pass it on to that object. So this is very similar to what we did uh, earlier with, uh, with the jumping game. And I'm gonna convert, convert int to string. And convert the score to the score string. And I'm just going to add this little bit here so that it will have the score text and then the number. Right. If uh, You don't have to do this. I just want it to look a little bit better. And then finally, we want to update GUI tags. Set GUI tags and uh, I'm just going to drag this guy here and we'll send the this text there. Okay. Now let's play this. So as we start to play, you can see that it's um, it changes the score. So that's good. And uh, also, I'm gonna just change the default text to zero. Right. So when we start the game, there'll be a at zero, and I'm just gonna save this scene now. I'm gonna call it high score. Okay, so we have this score. So this is nothing new. Now I want to create another object here, on the GUI text object, and I'm gonna call this one high score. 
And I'm going to also directly, well, first of all, just change this high score. And uh, gonna position it down just here. All right, so I'm manipulating this one here. And uh, I'm going to directly add a Playmaker State Machine on this text. And what I want to do is simply go to Player Prefs. Now, Player Prefs is where you will store all your user data. So think of it as well, the, the name Player Prefs stands for Player Preferences. And what that does is it allows you to store information on the device that the game is running on. Right, so it's very similar to the way we've been using variables. Right, we've, We have variables here that holds a value to the game. A player pref, let me see if I can find that window. A player pref basically does the same thing. It holds values in these containers where you can access uh, after you've stopped the game. Basically, the, the think of it as va variables that stays on the machine and that doesn't get refreshed until you explicitly change the value through player prefs, right? So if we come back to this, the variables we've defined, every time we restart the game, they'll reset. But any player pref variables, let's just call them variables for now, um, they are not going to be refreshed they're just going to stay in the system. It doesn't matter if the game is running or not. It's, it's, it's written to a file on your device. Let's just see, um, see how this works. And, and I think once we start using it, you'll have a better idea. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a, a local var a variable that's used in the game. right? So I'm going to call this high score. Actually, I'm going to call it system high score. <clears throat> and it's an integer. And here I want to go to player prefs, get integer. Right. And uh, you can have multiple of these. But for now, I just want to deal with one integer. And I'm going to call this key. Now, the key is like the name of a variable. But this is the name of the key which is uh, saved on a file on the on the device, right? So it's it's not a variable; it's a, the name to the key of the key, and this is case sensitive. So we want to make sure we use the right name for it. And I'm going to call this high score. And I'm going to store that in the system high score variable. Now again, the key goes into a file on your computer and grabs. A value that's assigned to high score and here we get that value and then we assign it to system high score variable right okay and uh, also I'm going to do something like this where I'm gonna say I'm gonna set actually let's not do that now so we get the high score so think of this as as a system data point, right? And I'm going to send this to my GUI text. And since this object has a GUI text component, so I can just use owner. And then I'm just going to, oops, we have to do this convert into to string. Remember, we have to have to have a string for a string variable for for the GUI text. Right, so I'm going to just do that now. System high score string. So I'm going to convert these two. Format. I'm going to say high score. I don't think you need quotation marks, but I, I like to have that. Okay. So let's see what that does. I hit play. It 
it grabs the value whatever is inside high score and then pass it on to system high score but because there is no value in high score there's no there's nothing is displayed here because we haven't set a value to high score yet we're just getting it now I wanted to do this because I want to be able to see the changes we're making uh, as we go uh, let me just turn off these states okay now let's come back to this so I'm just gonna call this display score <clears throat> Okay, uh, I don't actually need this one here. Now let's come back to the cube where we're adding a score. So the next thing I want to do is while we're adding the score to this local variable, local score, I want to compare it to the high score. Now there's nothing in the high score, so we are not going to uh, worry about that for now, but I want that logic to be there. All right, so once we've added a score, I'm going to add a new state. I'm going to call this set system high score. So once the score is added to the game, I want to compare it to what the high score is in the system. Now I need to first define a variable. I'm going to call this system high score again. Now this is on a different object, so we can have the same name, that's fine. And I am going to grab it. grabbing that score again, grabbing that key. So make sure that this is the same thing as whenever you want to get that score, it's the same name. Otherwise, you're going to get different results. But I'm getting that score, and then I'm going to compare the, the two, actually. I am going to simply grab whatever is bigger of the two. So I'm going to do score and system high score. Right. So the score is the local score here. System high score is now the value of high score uh, in the sort of the, the on the device. It's a it's a saved data. I'm going to pick the maximum one, the bigger one, and I'm going to store it as I'm going to define a new variable called new system high score. So I'm going to store this, the bigger of the two, in new system high score. And finally, I want to write this, I want to input, I want to enter this new value back to the player prefs key. Right, so I'm gonna go player prefs set int. I'm gonna go high score and the value is going to be the new high score. Right, so here we're setting the int. We're setting the integer that's defined in the player prefs high score with the that's the key. High score is the key, the name of the value, the data that we're storing. So let's see what that does. So when I click on this thing, goes to the goes through this state which adds one score here, and it comes down to set system high score. And because the new score is bigger than the previous high score that's in this key and there was nothing defined, so it was zero, or it was null, there was nothing in there. So we pick the bigger number, which is one, and then we store that number into the high score again. Now if I run this again, you'll see the difference. I run it again, click. Now you can see that the 
in the first action when we get int from the high score key, it's no longer a zero. It's now a, a variable of the variable is now one because that was the last right, key that we entered the last time we entered here. Right, so you can see that that score has been kept inside the system even when the, the game is stopped. Now I want this to go back to the idle state so we can keep adding score, right? But this the basic setup is done. Now let's go back to the high score. And here I want to make sure we're grabbing this every frame. Right? So it doesn't just do it once. So we'll update uh, as we continue to add scores. Okay, let's, let's run this. Right, now you can see that the high score is 1, and that's the because we, in the previous play session, we've defined the new high score for the system. Now if I start scoring, and I stop, and I play again, you can see that now the high score is 7. Right, so if this time I scored 15 points, or 16 points, I stop the game, and you restart it again, you see that the high score is now 16, right? So that's good, that's that's fairly handy for storing data that that's consistent throughout different play sessions. So that's how you do, how, that's how you create high scores, and you can use player preps for a variety of different things. It doesn't just have to be an int. It could be a string. It could be a float. But you can see that it's because this data is written in the system on the device, uh, it's consistent throughout. Now, there are, let's just take a look at some of the other ones here in the player prefs action. Player prefs delete all basically just removes all keys and the values in, the, the, in those keys. So let's say if you want to remove all user data, you just use this action. Per props delete key, then you can delete a key. So for example, if you want to delete the high score key, you can just enter high score here, and then you will delete that key from the system. And then as you can see, you can set and get float, int, and string. Right. So you can use that to start building a player data system. And again, you can have, let's say if you want to track high score and um, time, best time, for example. Then you can simply define, okay, I'm going to define two keys, and then you can do it here, or I'm going to get two keys. So, so that's how you use it, and uh, it's a little bit confusing at first, but just remember, all you need to do is set the per player prefs key to a value, and then you can get that value if you want to display it in the game. Right, so that's, that's basically how you do it.